Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. Hi, Stan. We have a very special guest tonight. Please welcome Meishi from Zoom Lens. Hey. Oh. Uh. Thanks for coming, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah. First off, man, you came in with a bunch of these beverages, brother. Thank uh, you so much. I mean, where'd you get this stuff? Uh, shout out to uh, Brian Rivers. And so shout out to Brian. Yeah. What's his name? Brian Rivers. Brian Rivers, man. I love tea, and he brought a shitload of honest teas. Brian Rivers is a tea man. If you uh, walk around our uh, LA circle, you'll see him at a lot of shows supporting us with very good beverages and uh, moral support. Cool. So, and does he work directly with honest tea? Um, that is undisclosed information. Oh, okay. Well, we're happy to get the drinks. Mm. Okay. And then you had some. Uh, didn't you bring in? Did you bring something for oh, us? Yeah, too? we got some. Vinyl here. Oh hell the yeah! Is this for one? us? Can I can I hold it up? Yeah. yeah. Boom. Show it off. This is awesome. Mm. And then it's uh yeah zoom lens. Mm. That's yeah. the label. That's your label, right? Yeah, all on uh, zoom um, lens. Okay. My label. That's one of that them. That one's my uh, second album. This is your and, second. Um, this one is uh, our new compilation. Oh awesome! Um, called Metempsychosis. The album artwork is by uh, Shintaro Kago. That's um, sick. Is that an animator, Japan animation? Like, yeah, he's a um, famous Eroguro artist awesome, from dude. Japan. Thank like you a erotic, so much. grotesque, yeah. horror kind of uh, artwork. Now, where could uh, some of the viewers get your cop these albums, man? You can uh, get all that music on our Bandcamp and our site. It's uh, zoomlens.bandcamp.com or yeah. zoom-lens.org and listen to it anywhere. Spotify, your Xbox, your... Uh, whatever means necessary That's to reach awesome, music. man. Now, Ailani introduced me to, uh, she invited me to one of your shows. Mm. I didn't know what it was. And then, dude, I've never heard anything like it before. It was, I don't even know, what, what genre would you put this type of stuff you guys are creating under? May She Smile is primarily influenced by... Uh, Large range of influences, power electronics, ambient, shoegaze, J-pop, just uh, about anything um, that I feel hits me on a emotional level, yeah, resonates me yeah. on an emotional level. I'm trying to tie that into current electronic music and with sort of a it, uh, punk. I, dude, you, 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 you. You, you're a good performer too. I, I, the thing about the, you, what I notice is you fully commit to it. Like mm. you're there and you just... And even your last show, there was a little bit of sound difficulty, but you kept going, mm. man. I like that. And then, so what? Do you have a different, when you perform, because you performed solo the last time I saw you, but mm. the first time I saw you in Eagle Rock, there mm. was another member on stage, right? Mm. Can you talk about that? Yeah, that's my live guitarist, Kevin Silva. Mm. May she smile, basically, as um, a lot of different mm. iterations. Um, sometimes, for depending on the setting, I'll play by myself or I'll play with Kevin or various other people I've um, re revolving uh, lineup through yeah. out time. So do you make all the music at home? The like, music on record is all produced by myself at, then, um, up until now. And then uh, what kinds of, do you have like different types of like keyboards or machines you use or programs? Typically it's all just done through Ableton and just a single MIDI keyboard. So I just compose Ableton. everything through there. I've heard too many good things about Ableton, mm. Ableton, Ableton. Can you talk a little bit um, about that pro specific program and like the benefits of using something like that? Mm, well, with Ableton, it, to me, it's just simply using another instrument, just like anyone else uses another DAW or digital mm -hmm. audio workstation if they mm -hmm. want to use Cubase or Fruity Loops or whatever. Mm -hmm. To me, it's just um, the easiest workflow for what I currently do. There's um, nothing specific that 
resonates to me on a different level from what I've seen with what other people mm-hmm, use. It's mm-hmm, just something mm-hmm. that, for my mind, works in a very right, nice way. Right. And that's a that's a program for your computer, correct? Yeah, yeah, any any yeah. computer. And then how much there. does that go for on the market? Like, well, you could go to Guitar Center right now and just get it. You could get it anywhere, or you could get it for free ninety nine wherever on the internet. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's between me and you, huh? Okay. Because um, I've heard... So what can you ac- actually do on Ableton? Is it just a recording program or can you make beats? You obviously can make beats on it, then, mm. right? Like Fruity Loops, right? Yeah, essentially, it's been well associated more with sort of... Especially in LA, like the electronic beat scene and low-end theory and those kind of people is sort of became the proponent for using that kind of, um, you know, instrument, mm-hmm. you could call it. But it's basically used for anyone who wants to record any sort of music. It's not really limited to any sort of genre at all. Um, and then can you, um, you could, can you sample in it? Mm, my like, music is, uh, it's primarily all my own writing. There's some oh. samples in there for textual purposes. Yeah, But yeah, it's all, all wow. my own music written by myself. So... In a sense, you do kind of like sound design too, right? Like if you, you're creating your own sounds and then just putting it out there, yeah? Mm, yeah, it's just yeah. all designed and produced That's by myself. Awesome. And then you do all the drums too? Yeah, all the drums are programmed by myself as well. Because that's one thing I felt, man, you should have been there, George. This is, it's a whole scene. I had no <laughs> idea. I'm like, you have like a good like base for like a good like loyal fan base for the mm. scene, right? And it's constantly growing, right? Because mm. I remember that show, it was pretty packed. And then the last show you guys had, uh, where was it, babe? Eagle Rock. Uh, in e- mm. Was it Eagle Rock too? Mm. Um, there, there was a lot of people there. Mm. And so, do you, do you, have you noticed that gradually the, the fan base is growing? I think as far as the trajectory of where I see an audience and where I see a fan base from issue out here, mm-hmm. I've undergone a lot of stylistic changes throughout the year mm-hmm. so or the past few years so it's more so seeing different faces mm-hmm. each time mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and to me that is something humbling to see uh, um, the same audience and also new people because I want my style to keep changing and bringing in different walks of people different facets of uh, music listeners yeah and I noticed that Marilyn Manson so mm. is that one of your influences too Marilyn Manson yeah yeah, uh, yeah. I wore it first on Dude, that that's Diplo sick. on Instagram wow where'd you get that eBay that's the, fucking the hub of all nuts clothing. I love the uh, it's a cross mm. but there's guns on it very very that's fucking Manson. sick man yeah, um, a friend of ours, he's been on the show, Robert, shout out to Robert Carranza. Hmm. He actually, um, is a, he produces for Marilyn Manson, or he uh, is a sound engineer for Marilyn Manson. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, you know, he said a couple stories. I don't want to repeat them here, hmm. but uh, interesting, yeah, just an interesting just a guy, character, yeah. Hmm. So do you, do you kind of, uh, are you inspired by him particularly, Marilyn Manson? Hmm. As far as the influences of Meishi Smile go, I would say that Manson and a lot of people from within, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, new metal mm-hmm. were a primary influence on me mm-hmm. growing up, mm-hmm. um, particularly because I felt in that sort of time frame, there was an acceptance of expressing aggression through an artistic format. Yeah. And for someone like Manson, who is trying to discuss um, about the human condition and filter that through his outlook on American society, contemporary American society, and making aggressive rock music. That was something that spoke to me a lot on mm-hmm. many levels. I feel that sort of aggression in new metal mm-hmm. really inspired me, especially as a person of color growing up. Yeah, we'll, 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 I want to mm. get into that too. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I want to get into that too. Mm. Because you were raised in... The Orange County OC, right? Mm. So what was that like being an Asian dude, like being raised there? Because isn't that like more, a lot of beach culture and stuff like that there? Mm. Or Where? just being just your Asian American experience? Yeah, mm. that's what I want to hear about. So just generally speaking? Yeah, like, just generally mm. speaking, because it, it kind of molded you into the artist you are today. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So 
now the Asian American experience of, of myself growing up through Orange County and LA area, Orange County is sort of the place where you have this kind of perfect veil over your face where mm-hmm. things are sort of placed in this sort of post-racial white liberal setting, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. But God under- damn, under- George. <laughs> no, just kidding. What's wrong with you? Post racial. I'm not. I just kidding. You're anti post racial. No, no, I just like fucking with yeah. you. I just. I always do that. Like, at least once every episode. I just. Yeah. I gotta. I gotta keep him on his toes. Like the little pee wee him in the word. Yeah, keep going, yeah. here uh, mm. uh, Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but Orange County is basically a white flight area founded on lots of racism, and. There's, There's a lot of musicians who've expressed that. Zach De La Roca, yeah, um, yeah. Raging Against Machine, used to talk about his experiences growing up in Irvine, Santa Ana. Did you see uh, Zach De La Roca? Mm. Because I don't know if you saw one of my latest vlogs. Mm. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was actually in Silver Lake, where in my oh. old neighborhood, uh, near Intelligentsia Coffee Shop. Mm. And I swear to God, it was just, I was just vlogging the street because that was just like, you know, walk down memory lane mm. type vlog. And he walked by me. Oh, Zach. Exactly. And I just froze and I go, and I didn't mean to do this because mm. I don't like blowing people's spots, yeah. you know, in public, but the camera, I didn't do that with the camera. <laughs> I was, I was just kind of like, he walked by with a friend mm. and I just kind of froze and I go, oh my God, I think that was Zach De La Roca. How do you like but, but then I was so kind of, um, mm. paranoid. I didn't want to air it like, cause I talked to, cause Robert works with him directly. Mm. And so I contacted Robert and I go, Hey dude, I just, uh, ran into Zach and he just ended up being in my vlog do you think he'd care if mm. I put it because I wanted to still put it out and he goes yeah he won't care mm. so yeah I'm sorry it's just a oh, no. little side story but uh, keep going very yeah, informative yeah. Mm-hmm. Zach sighting in Silver Lake I didn't yeah. know you lived out here yeah yeah. Mm. he's uh, um, early 2000 on because I used to work at Coffee Bean on mm. um, Hillhurst when I tr- the one, he used to, uh, I saw him there quite a few times oh, and okay. I, it was blown away because I was oh, like wow. new to LA and I'm like, well, what the fuck? He's, yeah, he's just right, right there, there, dude. <laughs> yeah. Out of Los Angeles. Yeah. But uh, I'm a fan, you know. I, I, mm. yeah, he's great, man. Yeah, I wish mm. he would come back, you know. Yeah. So are, do you still Much follow Rage? Are you a Rage Against the Machine? Yeah, that's another group within that canon of yeah, music, although yeah, they probably yeah. don't want to be associated with the rest right, of the group. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. And then, so in your high school, what high school did you go to? Um... Undisclosed information oh, undisclosed. within the Orange County, <laughs> LA area. Oh, okay. Mm. Now, but I would, we don't have to, you know, we don't have to say the name of the mm. school, but um, so what were the percentages? Were you like one of the only Asian kids at your school? There are actually a lot of Asian kids, but these Asian kids were very much uh, assimilated into the environment that we grew up in. So anything, yeah. any ounce of being Asian was too Asian for white kids and too white for Asian kids. So oh, just yeah. sort of this always in between of not fitting in with the yeah. majority of either. I mean, I, mm. I, I could totally relate to that. I would, mm. I was going to like Christian camps and stuff. Oh, yeah. and I was completely just, I didn't know mm. what was going on, you know? And even when I went to a, it was a big wake up call when I went to Arizona state, I'm mm. like, Whoa, like I feel like kind of like, well, th- I'm like out of my element or something, mm. but, uh, that's when I start drugs and alcohol. I'm sober now. Nine nine years today, sober man. So Congrats. I'm uh, I uh, I quit drugs and alcohol. And uh, so, mm. do you is that um, with drugs and alcohol is that a huge factor in your scene? Hmm, it's something I feel like I don't see on the surface. I don't. I didn't see it either. Hmm. Because I was in the crowd. I was, we were dancing the whole time. Hmm. And I did really didn't see anyone doing anything mm. they were just there primarily for the music yeah i think particularly I like with, that. Uh, that environment too is a show by mark Redito, who is sort of known for fostering you know younger community and sort of a safer space for what's his name again? Into electronic music uh mark Redito. Dude, did he perform that night mm, yeah he was a headliner Let's give him a shot let's give him a shot mark my- Redito, shout out the- oh i saw a set dude mm. he was on the he was hitting yeah, the drums, the, uh, man. Yeah. 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 Go far. We go pretty far back. We did uh, one of my first shows that Imani w- was actually at was myself and Mark. Mm-hmm. Mm. Dude, that dude kicks ass. Mm. I was like, kind of like, because I was so tired. I, we we're dancing and I was kind of on the side, but then he was like headlining, right? He was like the yeah, last act. He always brings a But then I was seeing it. I'm like, 
I heard this like I saw the guy on stage. He was playing shit, but then I saw mm. him like it was like he was playing drums, but not really. But he was. Yeah. So I'm like, whoa, is he like playing? He was tri like playing the drums, mm. but not like a normal drum set. It was like some electronic drum kit thing. Yeah. What is that all about? Yeah, just like sort of more textural. Um, yeah. yeah sounds. So, um, is he one of the dudes that like heavy in your scene? Like, cause you, I would cause say, you yeah, he's pretty integral to the LA beat scene and his culture yeah. right now. Um, especially what he does with, uh, Likido and highlighting a lot of, uh, wow. marginalized people. That's fucking awesome, man. Mm. So let's talk about the LA beat scene. Cause I have a mm. homie, uh, Mike Gal, my homie, Mike Gal, um, mm. He's in a beat scene, but it's different than what you guys are doing. So are there mm. like different types of genres of beat scenes and stuff throughout LA? Mm. Yeah, I would say LA's music scene is fairly vast. Um, as far as where Meishi fits in, I feel like Meishi, I wouldn't like to tie it down to any sort of genre, just mm -hmm. um, generally electronic music. I feel like <clears throat> when I'm trying to express with the music, I don't want to typecast myself yeah that's anything, cool man and just you know playing back into the discussion of sort of where i'm coming from individually i feel like the nuances of my identity and influences put me in this position where trying to transverse the simple electronic label genre. yeah 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 so what are okay let's i'm just gonna put you on the mm. spot real quick because i'm just just for mm. uh, just for my own amusement like because i'm interested um what are name me maybe five to ten of like of your favorite groups growing up that have inf molded you and influenced you mm, it could be any speaking. yeah yeah mm. i'm just gonna throw it out there so the list without yeah without yeah or if you can look them up uh, probably dean gray Mm-hmm. Prurient. Prurient. Porter Robinson, Porter the radio Rob department. Robert Dude, the radio department. My Bloody Valentine. Okay, I know. That's the only mm. one I recognize. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm the, yeah. My, okay, I, I've heard of that one. My mm. Bloody Valentine, okay. What have you forgotten? Um, so you did, you did five, you did five. Well, musically speaking, I, yeah. I can think of those at the top of my head. Corn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Yeah. There you go. That's like, like 90s shit. Territory. Yeah, yeah. See, a lot of my what music about you, Corn? For you, mm. Corn fan? George? No. Mm. What? I was punk cowboy, man. Oh mm. God, he's all about yeah. the selector and the specials mm. and stuff. Bad manners. <laughs> but keep going. We keep going. Mm. Suicide machines. Uh, <laughs> 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 Tofu beats. Okay, what's mm. what's uh, Japanese? Oh uh, artists, damn. Yeah. Are you mm. so? Do cause she mentioned. Are you moving to Japan? That's the plan for early 2018. Wow, dude, mm. that's fucking. Mm. So you're just gonna get up? Do you have like? Are you just gonna go? Mm, I was asked to play another show there by my Japanese home label, um, Maltine Records. Mm -hmm. Is uh, the name? Um, they host artists such as uh, such as I mentioned. Uh, Tofu Beats is one of their big artists who basically got signed to like a major label out that's there. That's cool. That's cool. And they produce very eclectic mm -hmm. uh, underground electronic music. There, they're one of the first net labels that came out of Japan giving free music and sort of building this culture around free digital downloads. Oh, free. Yeah. Oh. It probably came out in, um, I think they're about maybe 2005 or so. They started in high school. Oh, that's fucking yeah. cool. Mm. And then how'd you meet them again? Just through the internet or? Yeah. Th at the time I was really into J-pop, but also a lot of electronic music. Oh, and they're the cool. first um, label online that I found combining elements of J-pop with more Western beat making and mm -hmm. combining anime tropes into electronic music and making it something that was acceptable also to like yeah. a Western palette. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I found out about that maybe 2013 or so. And cool. Just sent them some demos and... And then nowadays you could just them email them mm -hmm. or like just through social media, you could just make connections. Yeah, I just uh, emailed them with some... some they're music. all about like anime remixes then. Really? So I sent them, this is like far back into Meishi history, very oh, hidden right. in the depths of the internet. So you got I, some anime history there too? Some, or? some deep anime. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, let's get into that dreams. too. Yeah. Like what, what kind of anime? Hmm? What kind of anime? Hmm? The, Oh, oh the, going on about well, the, 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 the anime. Well, the, the nudie, the nude ones, <laughs> the nude anime. I was, I was okay. very, very, very <laughs> anime. So I am. So I am so deep, you, deep inside. You, okay, brother. Cinderella. You do, do your thing, lifestyle. brother. I, hey, you know. man. 
There ain't no shame about yeah, that. No shame. I've, you know, I've, <laughs> no I've shame. watched I it. Mean, and, you know that the uh, yeah, record right I, there I, was yeah. produced by Faku with the help of Faku, who yeah. are, uh, help with the, oh, that's that cool. aspect of the Fuck anime yeah, with the pink one, huh? Spectrum. Yeah. It's the pink album, right? Not, not you. I don't think you particularly, you, you went to that cover. Oh, okay. But wow. That's amazing. So when did you, uh, now this mm. interests me. Now we're mm. getting somewhere here. Uh, when that. did you get into all that yeah. stuff? The, mm. the nudie anime, mm. the jet, you know, the, Oh the, yeah. The, where they should, you mm. know, the, <laughs> the tentacle thing, you know, the, the X-rated uh, animation. Uh, the X-rated. Oh, are we, yeah, are we getting X-rated. into that now? Yeah, yeah. When uh. did you did were you like when did you discover that as a oh, kid? Oh, when did I discover yeah, it? That's what, yeah. uh, are yeah. we, is this like a like a Snape thing? We aren't allowed to say the the. Oh no, the you can say whatever you want. Yeah, oh, I just okay. don't know the the terms oh, and stuff. Okay. I was just trying to. Yeah, what's the term? Yeah, what is uh, the term? Hentai. Is oh, the, hen- uh, yeah. Hentai. God mm. damn it! I should. I could have just cut right there. I was like wording around it. So <laughs> the around. stuff I was trying to get at is called hentai mm. anime. And mm. it's the stuff that we're talking about. Mm. It's the, the triple X kind of stuff. Mm. Yeah. But go ahead. Like, so hentai, it I like this. has very many different meanings to people. Yeah. To some, it can be a very um, transgressive and subversive mm-hmm. thing to discuss. But for me, that particular, because you would say genre of manga and anime mm, yeah, is manga, exploring yeah. um, sexuality, exploring different forms of sexuality and, and expression that is often not seen mm-hmm. in you know, normal formats of that. Yeah, yeah. And I think especially with our collaboration with Faku, who mm-hmm. are people who, in the West who are bringing out yeah, that stuff yeah. and translating it and bringing it out uncensored is that it lets a lot of people, which I've noticed also a lot of people from queer communities mm-hmm. who are able to see, you know, different expressions of sexuality. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so they get something different out of it. Yeah. So they, oh, yeah, everyone cool. sort of has their own projection yeah. of what it is. You can see it as art. You can see it as something you just do that too, or yeah. someone who could actually see something that they're not able to um, see projected in yeah. you know, typical erotica. Or yeah. No. Um, now, how old were you when you discovered this again? I discovered it mistakenly. Prob- it's not specifically hentai, but when I was about maybe 12, I was watching, you remember uh, Tenshi Muyo? I don't know mm. if I remember that one. Yeah, mm. I'm not very well versed. You know, I just, I have, I have mm. one in my bathroom. It's, uh, babe, can you look for it? It's a it's a double desk series. Uh, it's somewhere. I want to. I'll, I'll present with, it to you with, and t- to s- just with David yeah, Show yeah, himself yeah, yeah. To be a hentai. I think uh, you know. I think Dave knows more about this thing mm. than I do. I just I, I kind of like whatever I saw. I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. Like mm. you know, I'm not well versed in it at mm. all. But uh, when I saw it, it's like, whoa, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's called Inmu. Mm. Yeah, have you seen this shit? Oh, the the Inmu. The yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a, yeah. I have a shirt of that. Oh yeah, yeah that was cool shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why is it that hentai? It's always like some kind of alien, like tentacle thing going mm. into you know, like doing something bad to a woman. Mm. <laughs> I think not that it really adds any sort of narrative to well, it. It's like but like strangling. The, historically, and, yeah, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of like Japanese art which. Yeah, well, what's those it with kind of the cult? Is it, so it stems from Japan, like that, that kind of storyline, or yeah, I'm not really sure if I know the answer. Yeah, yeah, it's Wikipedia kind of interesting, right? That yeah, yeah. Mm. So you watch regular pornography too, right? Not just that. Mm, I'm not a big watcher of. Yeah. Uh, I've, of that sk- I've skimmed down. Yeah, mm. I've skimmed down. Not as much either. Mm. Yeah, I think that's another another reason why people enjoy hentai too, as compared to that. Yeah, it's kind of like the, fantasy, uh, right? It's not. Yeah, yeah. To not um, be exploiting, or well, you know, depending on how your outlook yeah. on it is um, of that industry. Not that all of it is bad, or not all of it is good. There's well, nuance to it still. So, yeah, and it's more but, accepted, right? Yeah, when but people, say- I feel, will uh, maybe float to you know hentai as and trying to get away from. That yeah, the, the, the bad right. parts of 
Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I, yeah, because maybe I don't know my 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 disc could have been an older copy or something. Hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I you know I dabble. I don't know much about it, but I know that if you were to do searches on like X videos or Pornhub, th- it's there, hmm. right? I mean, it's like that. Ex- George, you know about that, right? Top five hentai. Yeah, top five. Yeah, top five hentai. Top mm, five. Top five hentai. Yeah, and then can you actually write them down right there? To- <laughs> <laughs> just, just write, write them down. Well, I'm not just. No, 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 no. I know. Uh, kind of, kind of putting me on the spot. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the right. one I'm gonna write down though is yeah. very. It you can just write it all a, out. Yeah, yeah, write it all out. <laughs> hey, I mean, dude. Steve. Come on, dude. I could. I mean, this is our the Stevie Weeby format. You know, I'm just coming up with the stuff. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna show you the list too. You'll be able to see the list. No, I'm gonna like just write down like 26 minutes in. What? What? <laughs> you gonna? Oh, you gonna? Oh, I thought you were gonna like show it on the like edit it that way. Okay, actually, let's. Wait, okay, so some of the titles can't wait, come to on, my wait, mind. Hold now. up, man! You gotta write a little bit bigger than that. <laughs> okay. That's, the thing. That's like, come on, man! Well, I'll, write I'll a little bit bigger. Right I can talk about one of these. Okay, right yeah, now. talk about one say of them. The name again? There's mm. only two on there, though. I'm gonna yeah, call you. Yeah, you gotta put five. I'll on send there. you a list later. Okay. Oh, I gather all my bookmarks. <laughs> okay. Okay. So there's this one that most recently came out by an author who actually might not be Japanese. Their their name Shindo L. And it's called uh, Metamorphosis. Okay, first um, one. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Okay, let's talk about it that. It breaks down all the usual tropes of the genre and creates an environment where you are really able to, and this is something that broke down a lot of um, hentai, general hentai mm-hmm. fans too, uh, is uh, expressing this sort of tragic tale of this person who is exploited a lot through drug use and through prostitution and Mm -hmm. having the reader enter this story to actually empathize with this character and in a way also looking at other stories of the genre and being able to empathize with the characters as well so it was kind of something that brought in a lot of people expecting it to be like a generic kind of hentai or whatever but basically made everyone cry at the end. Fuck yeah. yeah. What year did that come out? That came out probably in the last two, three years or so. It just finally got yeah. translated to English uh, yeah. this past year. Good. Where can yeah. we, uh, I mean, that's not on Netflix or nothing, right? <laughs> Where can Hopefully we, uh, how, do, how does one find uh, that's also something through, like this? Uh, that's also through Faku. Oh. Mm. Number one, Metamorphosis. Okay, let's go on to the number two. Number two. <laughs> Well, anything by, I guess, Toshio Maeda. God, I can't even read you. La Blue Girl. Oh, come on, you got to write bigger than this, man. <laughs> Be Blue Girl? La Blue Girl. Okay, La Blue Girl. Mm. God. You know what? <laughs> Your handwriting exa- <laughs> is exactly <laughs> like my brother's. Mm. I yeah. swear to God, you write exactly like my brother. I'm trying to write in a very uh, No, no, he writes Asian exactly style. like that. No it's weird. Decipher. Keep writing now. Go now. Na- do be mm. natural. But yeah, you could write the other ones too on mm. there too. Okay, so let's talk about La Blue Girl. Uh, Toshio Maeda is basically the proponent of the kind of typical hentai that mm-hmm. someone would describe, like tentacles. And yeah, that's what I saw. Yeah. yeah. So everyone has probably maybe experienced mm-hmm. uh, image from Toshio Maeda cool. before, yeah. um, unknowingly. Mm-hmm. So that's sort of his whole aesthetic. Oh, actually, um, Supreme did a collaboration with him this year. So that is something oh, else that sort of brought sick, him into dude. the Western limelight. Supreme the skate shop on Fairfax? Mm. Really? Yeah. They've been dabbling into the, and the hentai aesthetic. I'm glad you brought mm. that up mm. because that brings up another point, this whole streetwear thing and mm. this whole phenomenon. Why are these kids sleeping and camping out there just for a one collab shirt? Like, do you have to be in the know? Like, mm. why, why are they so loyal to this type of thing? Cause I, man, I I wear I'll go to Target. I don't care, you know. Mm. But these people are like are so gung ho about getting these collabs. Mm. Like, well, what what's up with that, man? Mm. I'm not sure if I can really identify yeah. it myself. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sort of. But you've seen the, it on Fairfax. Mm. You've seen it, right, George? Mm. I mean, they're like camping out, dude. Like, mm. I just never I drive by and be like, what the hell? Yeah, I'm just more so, of a, what's a big deal? buy a few things and just wear them for the rest of my yeah. life kind of person. Me too, mm. man. See, we're connecting. Um, 
Okay, so let's. Uh, so that's number two, yeah. Mm. So there's three more missing, huh? I'm more of a read it and completely forget the names and yeah, falls in the depths of my history and bookmarks. Okay, that's fine. But I will shoot you some in a, uh, a private chat later. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we get we got to. Yeah. Okay. Are you influenced a lot by like move certain movies or? Uh, yeah, actually, um, I would say. I look at the trajectory of Meishi Smile more in comparison to certain um, film auteurs that I look up to. So mostly a lot of Asian film directors and Takashi right, Miike, right. mm-hmm. Shinya Sukumoto, mm-hmm. Shion Sono. What have they done? Like, which one? Mm, Takashi Miike is probably one of the most well-known horror filmmakers in the yeah. West. They did uh, Audition. Oh, yeah, yeah. dude. I've seen Audition. Yeah. I love that probably shit. Probably the most well-known one. Yeah. Hmm. Visitor X, no? Hmm? Visitor oh, 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 X? Visitor, Visitor Q. Vi- yeah, Vi- that Visitor was another Q. one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so I really looked to Takashi Miike and uh-huh. a lot of similar filmmakers to inspiration because no matter what they do, because Miike has made these very transgressive films, but he's also mm-hmm. made kids' films. He's made superhero films. Really? Yeah, and... Where does he live? Japan still? Yeah, I think oh. he's still in Japan. What about uh, Korean? No Korean film ma- makers uh, like? Kim Ki-duk. He yeah. did... Uh, um, what is it? The Isle... Mobius, um, I forget the name of S- Spring, yeah. Yeah. Fall. I'm naming right. all the seasons out of order. Oh, no, you, no you're good. You're good. Yeah, hey, he babe, what's the, well, the mother, the director of Mother and uh, uh, Park Chan Wook? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Dude, that, dude, that's yeah, like, we love, yeah, that dude's boy. fucking, yeah, old oh, boy. That, that fucking dude. Mm. I love that dude. Mm. Have you seen Mother? I haven't seen Mother yet. You actually. gotta see Mother. Uh, we saw it, man. Have you seen Mother? No, no, Not the Mother. The, air, the, the Korean Aronofsky, mother. yeah, yeah, it's the Korean mother. Yeah. Huh? Well, it's about like this mother's relationship with her son. The mm. son's a little slow. He's not like, like, or anything, mm. but he's like a bit slow, mm. like kind of dumb, you know. Mm. And so he's uh, accused. He gets wrapped into a like a murder, like a girl gets murdered in the one of the villages mm. or something in a smaller town, and. It's about the mother just like looking out for her son. It's like a whole murder mystery. Mm. But at the end, it's like just like it, there's like a twist and it's fu- it's a fucking awesome. Mm. I don't. I, I definitely mean, see that one. Whoever played the mother, I don't. I don't know like the oh. their her name or anything, but mm. she was a great actress. Mm. Yeah. But that guy and I love Old Boy too. Yeah. That was fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's another director who plays on all these sort of different scenarios, but has these very central themes. Mm-hmm. the cohesive themes that they always sort of fall back on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, now are you, what's your take on America trying to remake like films like the, like the originals, mm. like old boy and let the right one in and, and stuff like that. Like movies, mm. like foreign movies that they just remake. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like anything I could say wouldn't really add to the conversation of what's been said already that mm-hmm. typically they have never turned out that will, whether it be for missing maybe cultural, social cues of the, the original country or yeah. just putting in, yeah, I, I think that generally that it's really that because that really changes the, even the old boy is a very violent film. Yeah. There's a lot of nuance to the violence and mm-hmm, when you mm-hmm. put that into an American setting, it really it, loses a lot of Did quality. you see the remake? Well, the, uh I just the old boy one very small clips and, and we'll, wanted to avoid yeah mm. and then another foreign film it's a Swedish horror movie let the right one in uh, I, f- I love the original mm. then they remade that into oh, I didn't even know they let me that. in yeah. have you seen that yeah. seen both I you, the original man I didn't watch the I didn't watch that remake I mean the original was a beautiful movie yeah. man mm. it takes place in Sweden yeah. it's, it's a vampire movie mm. like this girl vampire lives next door to this kid this blonde haired kid mm. it's, it's fucking awesome like the pacing or the oh, ending. Oh, dude, yeah. The, the, the dialogue, the, the just like the whole cinematography, everything. Mm. It's awesome. So, so like, um, when did you, did you, where did you go to college? Did you go to college then? Mm, yeah, I was actually studying journalism and filmmaking. Oh, cool. Yeah, man. so those have always been you know, very um, influential parts of where I see the trajectory of Nishi. Mm. Oh, cool. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So just being a musician and having a label, I felt as an extension of what I wanted to do as a writer, just being able to report certain stuff to the world, but yeah. instead it's reporting 
music and the individuals and I culture love behind that. I mm. love it. I love mm. what you're doing, man. Oh, you know, thank you. I'm anytime like I see some dude like doing his thing and I'll support it. You know, mm. that's why. I mean, that's why, you know, the Stevie Weeby show's here. So, you know, we so we could let the viewers know what you're trying to do out there in the mm. world. And, you know, and so do you have uh, any tours coming up or something to let the viewers know, like where they could catch you? I'm actually done with shows in why? L.A. for the moment. Um, when I'm in Japan, I'll be playing again out there. And yeah. probably I won't be doing anything in America till I'm back in around July or so wow. planning out some stuff and rest of the year I'm focusing on releasing some new music again as well okay you know that's cool you know you're just going you know you know musicians they go through their phases sometimes you want to perform all the time sometimes you just want to hide out like a hermit and just record and make your masterpiece or whatnot yeah mm. yeah, yeah yeah I feel like with my life sets it takes a a lot of commitment. Yeah. I try to make them different each time. Mm -hmm. So to really, I'm not one of those people who can focus on both. I like to put the singular effort into each one yeah, at a specific, yeah. certain point in time. I love it, man. Yeah. Like, so do you see, um, well, I could see the scene growing and do you think it, it could be, just get bigger and bigger and bigger and just spread? out mm. there like and get bigger like you know how like low in theory is like how it's mm. like it wasn't that big like early 2000s or whatever but then mm. now it's like it's like a norm right it's like even beat making or or ele uh, electronic music's more accepted man you know mm. so do you see your scene getting like up there to like almost like mainstream level like mm. yeah I think overall what I'm doing with Meishi and Zumans is at the end of the day we're just trying to remain uh, authentic to ourselves and yeah. where we're coming from uh, in our individual lives at the moment. So I'm not sure if <clears throat> what we do would ever be perceived on a mainstream level. If it falls into that place, it's something that I wouldn't mind. My purpose for music is a form of therapy for myself and for oh, anyone cool, who relates man. to it. So yeah. if it can be seen on a larger scale and for more people to connect and relate to it with each other, then yeah. that is something I wouldn't want to deter people from experiencing. Right, right. So that's not like your main focus. It's it's about the art and just keeping your integrity, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I respect that, dude, you know? Mm, thank you. Because like we're in an age now where people are willing to just sell their souls just for that hit or... You know what I mean, mm. and like they're will they're willing to just sacrifice their art just to mm. just to go up there, you know. And mm. that's cool what you're doing because you guys are like, in my opinion, mm. as like a a fellow artist too. Like I feel like I think this way is the more correct way to to, mm. to go about putting your art out there. Any thoughts, Kirby? Yeah, he agrees. What else? Okay, so yeah, Kirby let's agrees. see zoom lens as despite making primarily electronic and pop music as more of a punk label in a mm, sense. Yeah. Just trying to deviate from norm of what ex is expected uh -huh. necessarily mm -hmm, from electronic mm -hmm. music now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, now are there other, um, musician, musicians outside of your, your genre that you like, like are you into people like flying Lotus and stuff like that? Hmm. I think, the deeper I get into Meishi the deeper I get into Zoom Lens, I try not to listen to too many of my contemporaries, actually. Oh, and so uh, you kind of, you don't even listen to that stuff. Mm, it's something that I do respect, and if I hear it in certain settings, I'll enjoy it, but I try not to let it overly influence me too much. That's cool. It's sometimes I'm the I'll, same way, dude. Yeah, yeah I always come could, to it, but mm -hmm. much later. Like, right. I'll listen to it, like, after a year it's come out or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. Now, what's out right now like that's on... Do you listen to the radio at all? Mm, I'm unbashedly and never regrettably a Chainsmokers fan. So that's what yeah, I hear yeah. on the radio and enjoy. Yeah, yeah. I know that's a very divis divisive opinion. Yeah, no, that's um, fine. Mm. There's only one... I do, I, mm. li I do like Hey Earth 101 mm. because they play like the classic rock hits. Oh, yeah. Those are good ones. Okay, Earth 101. You know, they play the... What's the... Uh, they what's just the play rock and roll, man, like for? Zeppelin and, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. 
I like that, you know? Mm. Um, so how are we doing on time, George? Oh, over 40 minutes. Oh, okay. Is there anything, did we, did we miss anything? Did you want to talk about anything else as far as uh, like your Japan trip or the, what's next uh, for your label or where people could download stuff and just anything you wanted to plug right now before? Because what we have, mm. we're not done. We're like kind of wrapping it up, but I still mm. have to do a couple shout outs. I wanted you to open these with me, like mm. they're uh, from for, for the Stevie P.O. box. Mm. So, yeah, so go ahead and plug everything right now that yeah, you wanted so to plug. Zoomlands, you could check us out on anywhere on the web, link in bio, someone's bio out there, mm -hmm. wherever, Spotify, Bandcamp. Let me hold these up. People will know what to type and Google search. So, just look us up and find out what we're doing. Mm -hmm. How did Zoomlens start? Yeah, how did Zoomlens Zoom start? started out of a sort of rebellion against the current noise and experimental music scene mm -hmm. I was in at the time, where a lot of people were had this ethos of a DIY record label, being able to just print your own covers or like burn your own shit. CDs. Mm -hmm. But the, and while I appreciate it, that sense of being able to start your own thing, the confinements of what was experimental or quote unquote music wasn't really looking to expand upon itself anymore. It was very sort of one track minded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's something I just want to get away from. And so that's why I started Zoom Lens and sort of, sort of a vanity label at first, just yeah. sort of my own music. Fuck and, yeah, why not? Um, but after that, it became something that um, I see Meishi as one of the artists on Zoom Lens and not someone who necessarily, although as uh, the, the main person who runs Zoom Lens, uh, Zoom Lens is its own entity, which yeah, is, yeah. exists within its own world by itself. Fuck yeah, yeah. dude. You know what's weird? I just noticed because you're in Mashi, because I'm in a band called Mong Chi. Mm. So maybe we could do something together, yeah, man. Like do a show M or something. M &M. Yeah. Mashi and Mong Chi. Mm. That it just makes sense. What was that? Meishi. Meishi. Didn't know that's what I said, mm. right? Meishi? <laughs> Meishi mm. and Mong Chi. Mm. Is that right? Well, I just want you know maybe we could do something you know because mm. uh, you know we're on, kind of on a hiatus but kind of not I'll mm. get to that in the announcements at the end so where could they uh, uh, find you on social media Twitter mm -hmm. Facebook Instagram mm -hmm. okay what's your Instagram MySpace mm -hmm. purevolume.com okay purevolume.com Angel Fire uh Keep going. Zanga. Yeah. AOL uh -huh. aim profile with the link in bio. Okay. So anywhere you type Meishi Smile, you'll you'll find me. Okay, can you spell it out again for the mm. viewers? Meishi Smile. M E I S H I Smile. Like the the smile. Meishi is a Japanese word. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. Meishi is a Japanese word. Yeah. Meaning a business card. Dude, so combined yeah. with the word smile, it's okay. meant to convey formality masquerading as an emotion and the That's duality of awesome. the human experience. Hell yeah. And then, um, so you already, and then they could get these records. You already said where these people could get these records. Mm, these records you could get on zoomlens.bandcamp.com. Zoomlens.bandcamp.com. Mm, but Bandcamp is dead. And we need to find a new place to. What are you talking? I just got my. I just got a band camp. <laughs> Why are you saying this, man? I'm a, I was just about to plug. I was just about to plug my band camp. But what, what's band going on said. with band? Let's talk about this real quick. Mm. What's going? What's wrong with band camp? Because I just, uh, I just transferred mm. all my fucking music onto band camp. It was a lot, of work. It was a lot of work, <laughs> George. <laughs> but yeah, I want to hear because I, I trust your, your expertise on the this. Band camp is not dead. Neither no, is. No, no, neither you, don't is to, you don't have to. You don't have to. But in a way, in a way. The, the aspect of internet music is still constantly changing where oh, to have man. everything centralized on those platforms, I feel that there is a <laughs> way to, at, to still deviate from them that we're figuring out. All right. I wish I would have talked to you like, I wish I would, no, seriously, I wish I would have talked to you like But be accessible ago. wherever you can yeah, be. Yeah, okay. That's, that's the, that's the, uh, 
bottom line of it. Okay. Though. Well, thanks yeah. for coming, brother. I wish you all the success, even in Japan. Mm. And please support his music. Support my brother here in all of his records. And even when he goes to Japan, go to all of his shows. Right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, dude. And thank you for the drinks. And um, mm. I just have to do at this point now in the show, I just have to, we have uh, Patreon. So, mm. and then we have a couple new uh, patrons. So, thank you to the new pa- patrons uh, Chikako Kanazawa, Sonny Garcia, Corey Grubber, AA, Andy Durkin, Amy Montagne, Soren, David Avila, Tony Gallardo, Eric Gervais, and Justin Hill. Um, Mong Chi, Mong Chi <laughs> is gonna be. Uh, we're doing a show. Uh, so shout out to Pat from Ruka and Artist Network Program. So shout out to Pat. Uh, call Dave up. I was. We're just recording a song, and I guess it's. Uh, we're doing a show in Hawaii, December eighth, on the North Shore. Oahu uh, for the Pipeline Masters. So it's kind of like the Oscars for like surfers, I guess. It's it's mm. a. Um, we'll just follow. Keep following the Mongchi Hammer um, Instagram, and we'll just keep posting more information when we find out more about the show. So yeah, we are performing. Mongchi is going to be in Hawaii, December eighth. I have a new band camp. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, yeah. Okay, okay. So, uh, so I have a new band camp, uh, Stevie Weeby, uh, dot bandcamp dot com. Um, so uh, shout out to Andrew, Michael Punk, Stephen Edder, E. Scott Blair, and Michael Perez, um, and Arthur uh, C- Cooper for uh, buying some of the music. So, and then now this part of the show, we um, we have a PO box. So mm. I would like for you to. Maybe we could open these together. And oh, yeah. I like to guess Love what's to, in these the things. So I kind of already know what's in this because he kind of gave it away. It says sausage stickers. <laughs> so I'm guessing there's stickers in here. So you could open that up. <laughs> um, let's cover. Uh, yeah, yeah. Make sure yeah. that it's anonymous. So we don't give anything away. It's very delicate. Oh, we forgot that. But okay. Mm-hmm. So um, maybe can we do this? Oh, yeah. Maybe right here. Respect the bot. Careful. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. there's stickers. Okay, here we go. Okay, ooh, there's a lot. Whoa! Oh, more. Look at this, huh? Cook, thank you, brother. Loving note. Oh, dude, he wrote it. There's a Stevie Weeby sticker. Oh, nice. And oh, it's a YouTube with the YouTube, with the YouTube uh, play button. So thank you. Okay. Stevie Weeby, you are the man. I recently found you through JK News. I binge watched a, a, a load of your podcasts. Your stuff is is the shit. And he has a shit. He has actually a poo sticker. Uh, I recently went back to school, started this company to help pay for books and post stuff I collect. Um, have traded with other. Um, Sticker heads on the IG page. I made you a couple custom stickers. Hope you dig them. Skate on your homie. Sausage stickers. Well, that's really nice. Uh, yeah. So shout out to... Wow, that's cool, huh? I like this one. So shout out to Sausage Stickers. So thank you so much, brother. Is this American flag too? No, yeah, that's cool. Okay. Now, this one's next here. Let me, uh, let me see here. I'll just do this. I have a feeling, well, I have a feeling it's a sweatshirt. I'm just going to say. You're going to open this one yourself, huh? <laughs> well, I'm not, well, well I'm going to have uh, Garrett open it. So, let's see, I have, I'm guessing it's a sweatshirt, but, what? Ooh. What the, f- what is this? <laughs> aqua, aqua dance? For the ultimate shower experience. It's like a mp3 shower thing or what er- erotic shower what what what's going on here george can you help me sure <laughs> aqua have you heard of this aqua dance mm. oh what it's a sh- new shower head a babe shower head Fuck yeah! Dude! We needed this! It's a new shower head! Amazing! 
amazing. Where is this guy from? I got to give him a shout out. What's his name? Thank you for the aqua dance, brother. Um, all it says is Nova Home. He's out of Lexington, Kentucky. Well, thank you so much, brother. Babe, look at this. Hey, you check it out, huh? Watch it. Keep it away from Kirby. And this is the next one. Okay, one more. Okay. We're almost done there. We're almost done here. Okay, let's do one more. I'm going to cut it for you again. Look at that, huh? Okay, I, I kind of cheated a little. I kind of cheated a little. Uh -oh, cheated. Hey, 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 it? It's a poster, I think. Very. Well, you were way precious. off of the last one. Uh, ooh, hold up. Ooh. Steve, hi. I was wondering what advice would you give to help me not care about what people think about me? Also, you're a cool dude, Kirk. P.S. I hope you like my art. I do the check your head by the Beastie Boys, one of my favorite albums. But I fucked up the letters, sorry. Holy. Oh, look at uh, it. <laughs> it's an awesome, go. awesome album. Um, so can you help me with this guy's question? He was asking, what advice would you give to help uh, people not care about what people think about him? What people think about him? Yeah. We could both kind of help this guy. Um, mm. I still, we're all human, right? Uh, my, I guess my main thing is just, uh, it's, it has to do with fear. So if, mm -hmm. as long as you don't let fear hold you down, you just, you know, what if you cared about, oh, what are they going to think about if I start my own label and like this music that's mm. foreign to their ear? You know, you would have never done your thing, right? Mm. So my thing is just forget what they say. Just kind of just do your thing and mm. not care about external, their response to what you're doing, you know, because mm. you can't, you'll be paralyzed that way if you, you know, we all care, but you kind of have to get to a point where you don't care too. Mm. So what, do you have anything to add? I don't. I'd say when you be yourself enough, then other people will recognize that too. And you can oh. be yourself together. Oh, okay. I like that. That's positive. And then that's, I hope Kirk, I hope that helped brother. You know, um, that actually might be from was Kirk, that? Kirk Hammett. Hey, go ahead. Jo oh, sh what? George is taking the mic. Oh, I got, uh, rejection therapy. Cause uh, if, if motherfuckers don't get you, it don't, they don't matter. So just look up rejection therapy. And uh, it'll get you get you numb to all that bullshit. Life is too short, so I mean, we're all gonna be dead one day. So might as well live the life you want to live without other people caring about you know. Because when you're, we're all like six feet deep underground. It doesn't really matter what you what they thought about you. You know what I mean? It's like we're all gonna. We only have a certain amount of time on this earth, and might as well just do your thing and just not be kind of paralyzed of what other people think about you right mm. i mean because that's no way to live you know ancient proverb uh, live yeah. in la vida loca <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you so much for coming thank brother you. i really thank appreciate you, you and thanks for all the gifts yeah with that being said it's uh, time for little ray <laughs> Welcome to Lil Ray's World Show All I gotta say is kids' minds must grow I got abducted by some aliens dropped in snow Whoa. Stuck into a world that I do not know So join me in adventures now And I promise not to have a cow my name is Little Ray, hey, hey. My name is Little Ray, hey, hey, hey. So welcome to my world. To all the boys and girls. Welcome to Little Ray's world. Hee Beep. Beep. What the hell do we have here this week, man? It looks like a god dang rat. Well, the hell's your name, man? And why the hell do you got a Starbucks tattoo on your fur, man? Yeah. 
Your name is Jack Robertson, and you are a barista at Starbucks. Is that correct? You love working at Starbucks so much, you got a god dang Starbucks tattoo on your arm, didn't you? You god dang corporate slave, man. And what happened after that, after you start working there after a year, huh? You got depressed, and you made yourself a frappuccino on your break and put cyanide inside and drank it? Is that correct? And you died right in Starbucks, right there where you worked, didn't you? Beep. Now don't try to beat him up. I feel bad for him. We wrote a song about him. It's called Jack the Rat. This one's about Jack the Rat. Jack the Rat, man. It goes like this, man. Jack the Rat was a rat to slap. Worked at Starbucks where he liked to chat. With all the customers, he was filled with crap. Sick of making coffees and he felt so trapped. Reminiscing over days with the ass he tapped. Now he's looking at his cat of mermaid with hat. You're a dumbass Jack with corporate logo and tap. Ink inside your arm, what kind of charm is that? Might as well have got a tap with a dildo strap. Right by your mouth, Jack, you get no dap. One day he was mad at the world and laughed. Made himself a drink of java chip like frap. Pour some cyanide inside his arm, spazzed and flat. Dropped to the ground on his face, fell flat. Now Jack is a rat of zap in the past. Even beef wants a scrap, but Jack couldn't last. The nether will eat him up, and that's a wrap. I wish I was a cat to make Jack a stat. Now Jack the rat is a rat to slap. Now Jack the rat is a rat to slap. Now Jack the rat is a rat to slap. Now Jack the rat is a rat to slap. Now Jack the rat. Join us next week for another episode of Little Ray's World. Let's get her done.